Now, what's difference between your normal MVC and Spring MVC? So in normal MVC, what we have is we have a model, we have view and we have a controller. So whenever you send a request to a web server, the request will be processed by your controller. Now controller will ask data from the database or from some other resources in the format of a model and the data will be displayed on a page which will be called as view. So you send request to a controller, you generate data in a model format, you send that data to the view so that you can show all the data. Now, uh, if we talk about Spring, if we talk about normal MVC, so you have a model, you have a controller. So you, you always imagine you have one controller. But if we talk about very big applications, you know, huge applications, in that you might, you might need multiple controllers to work with multiple views. So for different, different tasks, we'll be having different, different controllers. Now, when you send a request, who is responsible to, to accept your request? I mean, how will they know what you want? So let's say you want a uh, you want to, to you want to add two numbers so there will be a specific controller to add two numbers let's say you want to log into a system there will be a different controller to log into your system if let's say you want to log out again there will be a different controller to do that task for you so you'll be having different different controllers so you cannot send a request to multiple controllers at the same time so for all those controllers you will be having a main controller which will be also called as front controller. So you have to send a request to a front controller. Now front controller will decide, okay, depend upon your request, it will check your re request and it will send to the request to the particular controller. Now to achieve that, we have to first define who is your controller here. And to define this, whenever you click on a submit button here, the request will go to web.xml file, right? So you have to mention your thing here, you have to mention where you want to send your request. So you, you cannot directly send your request to a particular controller. You have to use a front controller. Now what is front controller? So in Spring MVC, that front controller is called a dispatcher servlet. Okay. Now this dispatcher servlet is a servlet of course. So we have to send your request to this servlet. And to do that, we need to, we need to, type, we need to uh, type the redirect data here, which is servlet tags. Now, instead of wasting my time in typing that, I already created a cheat code here or cheat sheet, you can say. I will be uploading this cheat sheet on my website and you can directly go to this uh, website, go to my website and you can copy this. Uh, I will provide a link in description area. So let me just copy this thing. So this is my changes. So I have to mention a uh, spring dispatcher servlet here which is org.springframework.web.servlet dispatcher servlet uh, so whenever you send any request so when I say I have to send any request so whenever I send any request here which is slash for all the request I need to call dispatcher servlet now dispatcher servlet will take care for the further processing okay so we need to mention this thing so we have to mention a servlet tag and a servlet mapping, which simply means for all the requests, you have to call dispatcher servlet. Now, just uh, point one thing, uh, we have a servlet name, which is Telisco. Again, what's the importance of this name? We'll see later, but time in, just remember, we have something called Telisco as a servlet name. Perfect. Now, if we talk about this class, which is dispatcher servlet, is it a part of Tomcat? And the answer is no, this is not a part of Tomcat. So in order to use this class, we need to add some libraries. So from where you will get this libraries, you have to go to Spring website. So you have to say spring.io. In that spring.io, this is the official website for Spring. Uh, then you have to go to project section. Then you have to go for Spring framework you'll be getting all your libraries here. So which is your Spring MVC, right? Which is, we are going for Spring MVC. So we have to, we cannot download those libraries here. We, the only way to get Spring libraries is we have to use Maven, okay? So what I will do to, to add those libraries in your project, you have to use this file, which is pom.xml, which is pom file. Uh, in this, you'll be having lots of things. We don't, we are not concerned about all those things. We are only concerned about the dependencies. So you, whenever you need something in your project, you have to add some type of dependencies in your project. So let's say you want a J unit library. So you have to add this dependency with the version name. Let's say you want to add MySQL connector for database connectivity. So you have to add one more dependency. 
So instead of typing all the dependency, again I have a cheat, cheat sheet in which I have entered all the, I have already entered some dependency. So I will just copy these dependencies. Again, I will let you know what are the dependencies are. So let me copy this and paste. So the dependencies we need here, the first one is JUnit. Uh, in, in order to test your application. In this, I will not test anything, so I, we don't require this, but let's keep it there. Second, you require your Spring MVC libraries. So this is your Spring MVC library. Next, we need, maybe in, in future, if you want to connect your application with database, so we require this dependency. Now, may, you may need to work with JSTL, which is Java JSP standard tag libraries. We have to use this library here. Okay, so again, you will get all this thing in the cheat sheet. Now, once you say save, it will download all the libraries from internet. Okay, or the Maven repository. Since I have already done this project earlier, so I have a local repository for that. So that that's why it was damn fast to download all those libraries. Uh, if you're doing for this for the first time, it will take some time for you to download. So you can see your progress in this section, the right section. Cool. Let me just show you that how it works. So if I say 4.11, I hope we have some type of version there. So you can see this type of progress will be there. Okay. Uh, let's go back to 3.8.1 if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So once we have entered this, so whenever you click on a button, whenever you click on a submit button, it will call. Uh, it will go. It will go to web.xml file, which says for all the requests you have to call dispatcher servlet, and then uh, you will get dispatcher servlet from this file. We don't want pom file. Now. Dispatcher servlet needs to send that request to some class, right? So we need to create that class here. So we'll go for to main. We'll say new simple Java class. I will say simple class with class here. So we have a class. We'll click on next. And we need to provide a name. Or we'll provide first package. We'll say tus or sorry, com dot telescope. Okay. And in this, I will provide a particular name. So name of my controller will be, let's say, add controller. Okay, and we'll click on finish. Now this controller is responsible to add two numbers. Okay, now I will create a method here, which is public uh, void add, which will add two numbers. Okay, and so time will not take any values, just print the output. So I will simply say, uh, sys out. Oh, hello. So it is sys out. There's something wrong with my eclipse. Yeah, so sys out, and we'll say I am here. Okay, so that at least if I run this application, it should print I am here, right? So if I run this, if I click on submit button, and if I the request, let, let's run this. Why to talk all this thing? Let's run. Uh, restart the server. Okay, so we have a form. Let me just zoom in this time. Okay, so let me enter two values, seven and eight. Doesn't matter. It will not add those values. But if I click on submit, oh, we got an error. Error says file not found. So you can see again, lots of people hate errors, but you know, these are the good things to learn new new things. So always go to the root cause and search for the error. So it says nested exception, which is java.io.file not found exception. Okay, so we are, we are missing with some file. And the file is this one, telisco-servlet.xml. Now what is this file? This file is basically whenever you run this application, whenever your request goes to web.xml it will go to dispatcher servlet but dispatcher servlet is a configurable class so your dispatcher servlet should know whenever you call for add you need to call this method now how to teach dispatcher servlet how to do that so we need to create a new file which is a configuration file for dispatcher servlet and the type of file will be xml we'll get xml file here and then we need to mention a file name but what should be the file name so it says the file name should be telisco-servlet.xml. We'll enter this name. Again, we'll see why to enter that name. So it is telisco-servlet.xml. Okay. So we got a file here. 
but why this file name that is called hyphen servlet uh, so the your file name your configuration file name should be something hyphen it should be something hyphen servlet.xml so this thing is confirmed this should be fixed you need to change this now this thing is depend upon your servlet name so i hope you remember i have talked about uh, I have already told you about this. You have to remember this part, Telisco. So since this is Telisco, so this should be Telisco. So that should be your file name. Okay. Now once you got this file name, we have to configure this uh, servlet. We need to add some bin thing. Again, uh, instead of typing all those things, I have a cheat, cheat sheet here. Let me just copy this part and paste. Now it will specify what to do. So whenever I call, whenever I call for add, my Spring MVC need to search for a package which is com dot what is my package name? Uh, com dot telesco. Okay, so it need to search for this package which is com dot telesco. Uh, I'm also saying that it should work with annotation configuration. 